Hello everybody and welcome back. I'm Tyler Edlin, illustrator, concept artist, and instructor. And in today's video, I'll be giving you my top five tips for approaching detail. So this will be more uh, idea in theory based and not a video on technique. So if that's for you, let's begin. So tip number one, what is just my raw kind of process for generating uh, information or brainstorming? And it, it comes down to a fairly common process called uh, mind mapping. So this is what I do. Like let's say if I had to do a concept design for soldier barracks, maybe I had to do an illustration or scene design that took place in some barracks, how could I flesh that out before I even begin thumbnailing? All right, so we have barracks here. Like, we want to ask ourselves the who, what, where, when, and whys for these, all right? Who, they're for sh soldiers. We could then naturally stem out from there. Is this a multi-gender sort of barrack housing situation? What are these soldiers' needs? Well, they'll need beds, storage, and sanitation. Maybe we could start breaking these down further in a singles and in a bunk beds. Maybe we could look at storage. You know, what, what would they need to sto uh, store? clothes, pictures, books, you know, whatever kind of personal items they have. We could even start to spread that off into separate branches, things like gear, you know, their boots, their gloves, their armor, whatever it may be. Of course, this would change too, depending on the, uh, the time period and culture you're specifically going for. Sanitation, these are things like bathrooms, showers, sinks, towels, lockers, a lot of very basic needs. And then of course, things like communal areas, things for socializing, areas for eating, and rec rooms. So right, if we're looking at just the things for eating, we could start to stem that one branch further, right? Tables, refrigeration, storage. This can go on and on and on. The idea is that like before I even begin drawing, I'm gonna have this massive list of items that I could possibly include to make my scene not only feel more believable, but you know, authentic. And this is purely from a logical standpoint. All right, so next up, let's talk about detail density. So we have a lovely painting by Greg Gritskowski on the left and a photograph of, of a very similar subject matter on the right. So what I'm getting to is we can, and what I'm referring to is we can basically break areas in design and in composition down to various pieces of detail. So see what I'm here? So see what I'm drawing here is a cake. So at the top, we're gonna go with a very high and dense amount of detail. We'll gradually get lower on this. So right, maybe we have a little bit of dripping frosting. Maybe there's some fun gumdrops. So see overall it's a little less detailed than the top. Right? And then we have the base where we'll go even simpler than that. So see dense, you know, medium and low for the overall detail. Because the a painting itself, right, that's good. The whole thing is going to be lower detail than a photograph. This is very rich, very dense all around. And therefore, I, and there's a lot of arguments made, you can make something very artfully beautiful when there's a balance of low, medium, and high amount of detail throughout a design. We can look at that in this uh, tower construction that I worked on with a student uh, a few terms back, right? So if we're just looking at the design of the actual structure here, right? There's vast areas, very big areas like the um, like the base and I guess internally, right, right here, it would be like that roof itself, you know, minus the uh, actual, uh, the housing, minus the actual housing compartment in here. Right? So these areas would be low and they're also large. Now you'll have areas that are fairly medium in detail density. Areas like this, which are you know pretty big, right, and spacious, pretty big and spacious. And then you will have medium. Then you'll have high detail areas. These are gonna make up the smallest overall proportions throughout uh, the design. And this is adding, again, a, a level of balance 
to the design. So we're not overloading any one aspect of the design with too, too much detail or too low detail. Because if you have too low detail, you're going to look boring. If you're too high, it's going to look unfocused. And for tip number two, Three, let's talk about appeal and subtext. So this is relating all surface features to deep, deeper meanings to maximize appeal in the designs. So let's look at the cool character Wreck-It Ralph. Right, as we see here, he's often made up of square shapes for the hierarchy of the larger elements of, of his design, which indicate right that he's bold and strong. He's rigid, you know, immovable, and he's stubborn. These are all very much characteristics of a square. But there's also contrast in that, like having round facial features, even some uh, some baby face uh, elements. So it, it again, it makes him do ultimately look friendly and nice. He could be tr trustworthy. And he's again, I have a lack of experience. Perfect for a Disney uh, character. Now let's get into a little more specifics, right? Like why would a designer want to give this character you know, wild and spiky hair. Well, it can mean that he's in, in dangerous at uh, the deep set eyes, which I forgot an E there, can mean that he is unpredictable. His small pupils may imply that he does have a dark intent because right within the context of his story, he is supposed to be the villain, even though he is our protagonist. So we can further look at some of his uh, surface level aesthetics, right? Like he has caveman gorilla proportions. Again, this comes back to the square shape design. This can uh, further imply that he has a lack of intelligence, that he is in fact very strong, and that he is clumsy and brutish. Again, there is a large emphasis on his hands. His hands are drastically larger than his feet because he's designed, his character designed by nature is to smash things. So he has a tool you know, with the functionality to do so. Next up, right, we have the, the final parts of his design, the hillbilly clothing with worn down materials. Orphan-like, he lives alone, uh, he's a survivalist, you know, even minimalist, and of course he's a fair amount of self-sufficient. So if you're designing a character or even a location and you do not know what further to add to it, I often recommend thinking inward rather than outward. What are some of the deeper aesthetics that can go to adding subtext and play into a narrative. So for tip number four, I have this down as categorizing different types of details and maintaining balance among them. And so for me, I have boiled down details into three main categories. Aesthetic details. These are ones that artfully address the surface level needs of an image. Secondly would be design-based details. This is in regards to functionality or purely based on the visual language. And third would be narrative and theme based details. And in a perfect world, what I try to do every image is basically try to make a perfect balance of those three. All right, so here's an image from a few years back. I made a quick checklist up here in the top right. And so let's just pick this image apart and see where some of this, uh, the details uh, fall into what uh, category. So right, let's, let's mark the first one aesthetic with pink. These are ones that are artfully addressing surface level needs. Uh, I think things like the texture on the uh, on the surfaces of various things, whether it you know it's ice, uh, concrete, maybe it's a flavor of a ship. I don't think the ship's necessary. But it, but it adds a little bit of uh, fulfillment to the scene. Uh, it may be something as well of like uh, the sky itself in terms of snow falling. Uh, let's look at uh, jump ship and go to uh, design based ones. So these are, okay, what, what do I physically have here? It's, it's a bit of a, a wall. Uh, it's not really necessarily like a dam, but it's, it's a bit of a containment gate over the water. So the the wall itself what you know what plays into that well i think it could be the fact that it is a tower i think that helps the the fact that there's really strong and blocky bases so details like this it is a brutalist style architecture so that plays into that uh, the fact that there is a retractable gate Right, that would be a design base. It, it's things that this needs to purely function. It could be like these little guys in here, like support brackets and in general construction. Um, 
the cranes. Now, I'm not going to classify that as that, uh, but things like these lights, like to, to illuminate various pieces. So let's look at the narrative or theme based, which we will mark, you know, acid green. Things like this gas mask, you know, showing that it's, you know, basically kind of like a containment uh, area or safe zone. Here would we have like, you know, the red star show maybe that these are, you know, Soviet based alternative history uh, elements like these two guys jacking up the ice around the doors because it's probably you know could jam their system so to make way for for passage right so these are all playing up to that narrative and, and uh, theme now the other ones could be the fact that since i have red here i added red uh, support structures kind of building up as well so that color choice can narratively kind of theme and and unify everything together and so I have two examples that I'm primarily working on here to demonstrate this. So here is in this first image, I'd consider it overall a medium to low detail painting. It's, it's a bit of a quicker sort of color sketch, right? Everything is fairly low and fairly quickly executed. It, there's not a very, if we really get up close, there's not a, an, ex, an exquisite careful amount of attention paid to cleaning things up and adding specifics. But let's say if I started really upping the overall detail in one area of this right like this where we have very specific trees shapes and really clean sharp shapes for houses it's going to start to break that internal consistency of the image because now all of a sudden in this in this area and zone it's much higher detail than something like the focal point of the castle so that starts to like deteriorate the image so this is definitely an occasion where adding more detail and how I add more detail can ultimately hold back the image. Now this example here, fairly similar in subject matter, but the overall detail aesthetic is, is a bit higher, higher in density. So a much more careful approach to detail in, in most of the architecture, some of the mountains, and as you can see in the foreground here, this is still a bit too rough. Why? Because I'm not done this. I want to finish this this weekend. So this is, again, holding the image back because it's not cleaned up enough to uh, match, you know, kind of like the quality that I'm going for, for the background and for the main subject matter itself. So again, the, the takeaway for this is to have a certain amount of consistency inter internally within your own image so that it feels like one cohesive place. Uh, piece and it will in a sense be unified so guys let me know if this video helped you out let me know if you have some tips that i didn't think of and of course drop me a line and let me know if there's other subjects and stuff very similarly you'd like me to cover till then take care thank you for checking out my video you can support the channel if you'd like by subscribing liking or commenting on my videos you can find me on the web on facebook ArtStation, and Instagram. Those are the social media outlets I utilize. I also teach two courses at the Computer Graphics Master's Academy, Architecture Design and the Fundamentals of Design. Feel free to check those out. Now, if the classes aren't few, I also teach one-on-one. -on -one. Join the hundreds of students around the world for one-on-one -on -one learning. And for more info, just send me an email. Also, feel free to join the Brush Sauce Discord community. There's links below. It's fun. We do weekly hangouts. There's the challenges. And it's a great place to make friends. Take care.